one of the worst experiences, <laughs> things that happened to me was when my brother passed away. My older brother. Yeah, and this happened pretty much about the same time that my uh, father passed away in um, 2009. So this, and we had been friends already for like four years at that point. And um, for us, it was extremely heavy uh, emotionally, obviously. And um, we were, you know, comforting each other and, you know, were there for each other in that sense. But still, it was a very dark pit to, to be into. and. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one thing missing a relative, but my father was also like a role model artistically and uh, intellectually in a lot of diff different ways. So it was like losing a father, a family member and, and a very good friend at the same time. So <clears throat> I kind of buried myself really deep apart from the, you know, the mourning process and everything. And uh, Elise was there for me, but um, apart from that, it was also when we kind of really started the band for real. Mm -hmm. I mean, composing music. Well, inside the band and also outside the band, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, you know, that really helped us to, to cope with those things. And I think that the first songs that we wrote for Amaranth were like, you know, ultra positive and really, you know, uplifting and very energetic. And I think that probably what we were doing were like trying to lift our own mood up somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Before. That was exactly how what we did. Yeah. Like, oh, that feeling could be... Like for me, it, it was probably that that I didn't want to live anymore. Because, I mean, that was also like, I've been also very depressed when I was a teenager. Mm. And I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere or with anyone. And my family was like very split. And we moved around, I didn't have any friends. So I was listening a lot to music. And that made me feel like I had someone, like a friend that felt the same way as I did. I think for me it was like, you know, typical feeling of denial because uh, <clears throat> I was actually there when he passed away from, from brain tumor and I, I was holding his hand as he was like, you know, drawing his, his final breath and uh, still even if I saw it, you know, very up close, I was still in some kind of, you know, denial and shock, obviously. Um, and I think, you know, my spontaneous reaction was just to keep myself busy. So like the, the first thing I did, I think the very same day or the day after, um, I think I started to like renovate my entire apartment, you know, while, you know, while crying and being completely devastated just to, you know, focus on something. Um, but it was, it was a feeling of utter despair and, uh, you know, it, I think I, I, I kind of pushed it away for the first year or two. And I think it was like on the third and fourth year when I started to, you know, actually started to realize that he was, you know, not going to come back. And <clears throat> and I started to have like these extremely frequent dreams where he would like seem very real, like he was, you know, 100% back to, to real life, which was, you know, a real, you know, very confusing. So I think I'm, I'm still dealing with, I'm, I'm still in, in like the, the process of actually understanding that I will never see him again. So yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. Like I was, I could be happy, but I never felt the same kind of happiness an anymore. Like after losing my brother, it was just, I felt like this black empty space in my heart, you know. And also because the rest of my family got very affected by it, of course. So it was, it was very hard. And then when I was with Olaf, I actually said that, but we could write music. We can also, of course, write depressive music, but I think it would feel better to actually write something positive, like about the future, like hope and uh, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, like Olaf said, that's exactly what we did. Like one of the biggest reasons why I actually wanted to do this music was because of him. Because he inspired me all my life and he told me that I should do metal and not be a pop singer. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then I was hoping that he could maybe join us, you know, for a show or like be a guest artist when we wrote after writing the first song. And then he passed away and then I never got the chance to. But we're still... We're still We're here. Still here. <laughs> mm -hmm. For people, when they are in, like in this dark hole, it can feel like, okay, do I really need to like create something like this big because it will feel like a, you know, such a huge thing to, to pick up from the beginning. But what we did was like to, to forge that like this very tiny thing. It's like a seed, you know, that kind of grew from from the sadness. 
a seed fueled by the tears, <laughs> you know, from of mourning, I guess somehow. It sounds cliche, but it's it's kind of true. So I think for people, it, it's really hard to kind of, kind of start somewhere because you feel like you, you, you need to feel better tomorrow or you need to do something with all this grief and all this sadness tomorrow. But the truth is that, you know, a, a part of me and probably a part of Elise as well is still in that dark hole, you know, six, six years later. So you have to take it like one, one step at the, at, at the time. And if, if you want to turn, you know, all this blackness into something more positive, it, it's going to be a long process, obviously. So I don't think that anybody should feel discouraged by the fact that it feels that it feels difficult because obviously it does, and it, it felt really difficult for us, and it still does somehow. But also at that point, I think like what made us stronger was that we didn't feel that we have to succeed, you know, this exactly. music thing career-wise because we're anyways so fucking depressed right now. <laughs> so if we fail that, we it's not going to feel anything near to f lose someone you love. Exactly. So we do. Um, well, I'm happy that I was so strong, and I think that's one of the reasons why I feel extra strong now, you know? That I can actually do anything because I went through that hard time. And that's a very great feeling. So I wish everybody will just hang on and get the chance to feel that later. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it might almost sound ridiculous to, to say something like that, and, and but Elise is 100% right. It will uh, absolutely get better. and. Uh, I, besides like the whole thing with my father, I was in, just like Elise said, in some really, really deep holes as a teenager. And if I would hear myself or a person like me, a musician, saying that, you know, it's, it's going to get better or, you know, like a parent or a teacher or whatever, I would be like, yeah, maybe it got better for you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, my depression and the dark hole that I'm in is something completely different. It's something that you ca can't even fathom, something that you can't even imagine. But maybe maybe we can imagine maybe we have been there and i can say for myself that even if life is never easy and it's definitely a hundred times better than it was back then so you know if if i could get better from that you, you can definitely get better as well You matter. You are needed. You rock. 